Dear students, today I will be telling you about one area which is very important from the civil services point of view. Many times the questions are asked on this topic. I will be going in the background of that topic. We will be discussing one country. That country which is divided, which is having a problem, not because of the people of that area. The problem is because of the ideology and the interference of the other countries. I am talking about Korea. Why today I am talking about Korea? Because about seven decades ago, today, that is 25th of June, their fate was decided. Slightly, I'll go in the background of this Korea. Korea is an island in the East Asia and many scholars called it the Korean Peninsula. It's a, in the Korean language, its meaning is how my high mountains and clear water. That is the exact meaning of this Korea. In 1897, the Korean Empire was established. I won't go the, in the background much in, in deeper history of this area. We'll start from the modern times of it. It was in 1910 that Japan captured it and started abolishing Korean culture. They, led, they made a lot of atrocities on the people. People were killed. Their religious places were demolished. In large scale, the women were raped. And it remained under the Japanese influence up till 1945. All of you know Japan was defeated in the Second World War. Now, we'll discuss the period from 1945 to 1950. In 1945, the two countries, America, Russia, they met at Posterdam. Posterdam is in Germany. It is called the Posterdam Conference to divide the areas which were won by them and one of them was Korea. 38th parallel was created and it was divided into South Korea and the North Korea. South Korea was named as the Republic of Korea with its capital at Seoul. North Korea with its capital at Democratic Republic of Korea with its capital at Pyongyang. Now, the, all of you know this North Korea goes under the influence of Russia and South Korea goes under the influence of America. Russia was having a different ideology. Communism spread over there. And US Army recruited a large number of Nazis in the intelligence. For your information, in uh, 1947, 
the CIA, the intelligence agency of America was created. At that time, the US president was the true man. The North Korea was headed by Kim Il-sung. He was expert in the guerrilla tactics. He, he, he was defeated from the Japanese forces and he took the shelter in Russia. He is the grandfather of the present Kim. On the other hand, the South Korea comes under Syngman Rhee. He was against communism. He was studied in America. And in 1945 to 50, the both parallel governments carried on. And on 25th of June 1950, North Korea decided to attack South Korea and he wanted to merge with, merge this Korea into the one Korea. Now, USA sent its forces under the UN peacekeeping forces. Russia and China also entered. USA had to face attack from the three sides. One from the Russia, USA and Korea. In the UN keeping forces, one of the Indian Lieutenant Colonel A.G. Rangaraja played a very important role. Even nowadays in South Korea, there is a statue of, in their capital Seoul, there is a statue of Mr. A.G. Rangaraja, who was left in the colonel at that time. He participated under the UN peacekeeping forces. And the commander in chief from the UN, from the USA, the UN peacekeeping forces was Douglas MacArthur, one of the renowned generals of the world. He played a very important role during the Second World War. In the beginning, the MacArthur was successful in pushing back the North Koreans. MacArthur didn't took the help from the CIA. He set up his own intelligence agencies. He was not having a faith on the, his own country's intelligence agency. He wanted to cross the river and see the China. But he got the wrong information and he had to face a three-side attack from North Korea, China and Russia. And in between the war, MacArthur was replaced by another general, General Matthew. And finally, in July 1953, the war came to an end. It is believed that 50 lakh people died in this Korean War. US, along with the UN peacekeeping forces, was defeated and compelled to stop the war. And but this war didn't come to an end. Why? Because no treaty was signed. Technically, if we see, the war is still going on. Because whatever the terms were put by USA and other countries, they were not acceptable to South Korea. 
and presently south korea today emerged as one of the first 12 countries 12 economies of the world whereas north korea which is ruled by hereditary dictatorship is one of the poorest countries of the world south korea is always known for the developmental projects whereas north korea is known for missile testing and creating disturbance in the region two years later in april 2018 both heads of the north korea as well as south korea they met at singapore but no solution could come out in june 2020 south korea sent the balloons in which the dollars and the criticism of north korea rule was explained in the slips in retaliation in retaliation north korea also blown up the liaison office on the border which totally blocked the peace process on 22nd june 2020 north korea decided to send the balloons in south korea about 1.25 crore balloons in which they sent some slips and pieces of secrets and waste material which spread on the roads of the south korea there is no peace in korean peninsula again i'll repeat not because of the korean people but because of the ideology and interference of the western countries or the interference in the politics of the countries i think this lecture will be very useful for you people in knowing what is the reason behind the conflict between the north korea and the south korea why these countries are fighting and this topic is very important from the upsc point of view thank you very much